Thanks. You know, this was our first attempt at really having a global CDO summit. In the previous years, it made no sense, you know, because there weren't that many chief digital officers outside of North America. Four or five years ago, 88% of CDOs were right here in Northeast uh, United States. So now we've just seen an explosion of chief digital officers throughout the world, especially in Europe and in Asia uh, and Australia. So uh, what I tried to do in this event, which was different than the past, was bring in people from all over the world. So we had uh, uh, folks from Turkey and from uh, Israel and Canada and from uh, Sweden. We had the CDO of the Nobel Media, which gives out the Nobel Prize, come in from Stockholm. Uh, CDO from a German events company, one of the largest trade fairs in Germany. Uh, folks from Israel. So it was really truly a global event. And I think it proved to the audience that this title is here. It's important. Uh, it's critical. You know, and I would say one other data point that I've been tracking is uh, chief digital officers who've become CEO. And uh, up until about six months ago, we had tracked about 50 CDOs who became CEO. But that doubled, and now we've got over 100 CDOs who have become chief executive officers. So again, I think it shows that this position does stick and that the people who are taking these roles are increasingly the leaders of, uh, of society. In the beginning, it was really sector-based in the States. You know, you mostly had, I'm talking about the 2012, 2013 time frame, where CDOs in the States were in media and publishing and education and government and higher ed. But then when I went to Europe a year or two later, they're in almost every sector. You know, Renault hired Patrick Hofstetter, chief digital officer of Renault, six years ago. Uh, look at L'Oreal in France. You know, again, six years ago or so, uh, a cosmetics company, one of the world's biggest cosmetics company, hired a chief digital officer. So the difference I would say is that Europe caught up very quickly with the United States. And we see chief digital officers in insurance and in banking and in finance and in cosmetics and at car companies. Uh, so now I would say uh, in the early days the difference was there were uh, chief digital officers in the States were very segmented. But uh, again, now it's almost across all sectors in both the U.S. and Europe. So Europe caught up very quickly. Yeah, the top 50 CDO influencers list is on our website. If you go to cdoclub.com and click on the first link, you'll see write-ups of 50 CDOs and their profiles, and we rank them according to influence. So we use the Von Schein spotlight in order to rank them according to a number of different criteria. The number one person we had ranked was Sri Srinivasan who was uh, Chief Digital Officer at Columbia University, then the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and now he reports into New York City Mayor de Blasio. So, you know, he's clearly also very influential on social media. So that was one of the reasons he ranked so high. But this list is ver very interesting, you know, because there are CDOs from all over the world and from almost every sector, you know. Uh, and I think uh, if I can give you some data points to explain just how popular that list was, we have our, uh, when we came out with the press release and put it on our blog that very day, which was Thursday last week, we had the, his we broke our historical record of unique daily visitors to our blog by three times. And then the next day it was two times. And then Monday this week, again, we broke our historical record for daily uniques by 2x. I mean, that's incredible how popular that was. And I think it's because people really, you get into a competition, you know, and CDOs want to see who's high on the list and, you know, how they can improve their ranking next time. But again, I think it also goes back to my previous statement that CDOs are influential and they are, uh, you know, they're here to stay. We see this uh, position really sticking and uh, love to bring together all these folks at events like this because they can share knowledge and, uh, and network with each other. A lot of new things came to me from abroad. So, you know, some of the things that I've learned today were um, 
uh, from the keynoters like uh, Magnus from the CDO for Nobel Media and from you Ali and from Rob what's happening in Europe you know I wasn't aware of some of these trends not only for CDOs but CIOs throughout Europe so that was enlightening and valuable information as we you know expand this group into Europe and I would say too I was surprised by some of the IBM stuff you know like I didn't realize to say you know we had him as a keynote speaker but even with that I didn't realize just how amazing people like Kevin Egan uh, at IBM are. He was just actually today he was named Chief Digital Officer at IBM uh, before he had a longer title. And Bob Lord, you know, the CDO at uh, the IBM uh, uh, organization as well. Uh, I think Kevin, his brief is so broad and the fact that they're taking his ideas and expanding it outward past the organization to help other companies with their digital transformation, you know, we're going to see IBM really, really take off in, in, that, in that area. Next year, bigger and better. You know, more people, more speakers, maybe a two-day event. We, as, you, as you know, Ali, having been here before, there's so many people who can keynote and so many people who deserve a spot up on that stage, but I only have eight hours. Uh, to program everyone in. So I think we're going to try to figure out, uh, this year we introduced a new concept which was uh, sort of TED style talks where we gave people 10 and 15 minute keynotes where we call them impact keynotes uh, and I think we'll see more of that too, maybe less of some of the panels and more of these impact keynotes uh, so that we can give people, more, give people more stage time. I love CDO World, get yourself a copy right now.